Now that's what Christmas is all about. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Um, well, welcome to First Church this morning. If you're a guest in our midst, just know that we are blessed to have you here in the house of the Lord this morning. And um, he says in his word that where we gather, he will be also. So he is here this morning. He is alive. He is risen. Um, and in this season of Advent where we wait for that, we wait for the coming Savior, uh, it's a beautiful time. So if you would stand on your feet this morning and let's praise him. a lot to be thankful for this season, um, but also we have a lot to pray for this season. So 
um, this morning reach out and remember um, all those that are sick, all those that are in the hospital, all those that long to be with those people in the hospital and, and be able to hold their hand and, and tell them how much they love them this morning. That's also very hard. So if you would bow your heads with me, please. A wonderful heavenly Father in this beautiful season of Advent, we're ever reminded that we wait upon the hope. And Lord, that's never been more of a thing than this year, this crazy, hectic, just troublesome year. And Lord, as we stand before you this morning, just remind us that hope came and that hope dwells with us, that hope didn't just come in that manger and stay there, that hope lives and breathes through us every day throughout history. And Lord, let us carry that hope. Let us carry that to the world that needs to hear that message of beautiful, saving hope. Because it's in that beautiful and precious name of hope that we pray this morning. In Christ's name.
2 Samuel 7, 1 through 11. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in the house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and more move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more, as previously, since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Luke 1, 26 through 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your, rel your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and the divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now, we forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, the Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, we lean into that presence. God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. 
It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. and adore cause you are so much more than just a baby hands tiny little hands one day we'll heal the scars of every broken heart love oh how the love from now and through eternity, love will be your legacy. Right now in this stable on this cold December night, I'll wrap my arms around you, keep you safe tonight. Baby, you're just a baby. Came to change. Save the hearts of everyone, King of all kings. Hear the angels sing, worship and adore. Cause you are so much more than just a
Well, good morning. All the outside candles have been lit now, which means that the time is upon us. Before we gather on another Sunday morning, we will celebrate Christmas right here. Do you know the phrase slow as Christmas? <laughs> it seems like Christmas has been slow coming this year. Uh, a long, a long year, a trying year, a tumultuous year, and yet God is faithful, is he not? And we're at the point of celebrating Christmas once again. In light of God's faithfulness and goodness to us, let's bow our head and ask him for his direction in our hearts. God, we thank you that you have led us this year to the point where we have started that journey that we call Advent, a journey that is fulfilled at the moment of Christmas this coming week. We thank you for reminding us in these weeks of the words of the prophets who sowed seeds of hope, who reminded us of the God of peace. who looked forward to a time of joy. And as we round this fourth Sunday of Advent, we're reminded that love came down at Christmas. In the form of a baby. So as we think about your goodness and we think about your love and we think about all that you have blessed us with we ask that you would instill within us your word by the power of your holy spirit that we may know what it is you have to say to us even this day even at this time even at the end of this tumultuous year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you that tonight we're going to gather out here on the street if you'd like to come and be with us. And uh, it's not going to be a long service, but it's going to be a time that we're going to sing a few carols and read the Christmas story and light candles together. We can do that tonight on the street. We can't do that uh, Christmas Eve this year, but we have, um, uh, we're have we still offering you the opportunity to uh, come and get some candles and have them in your home so that you can join us when we celebrate on Christmas Eve through the service that will be uh, broadcast on that night through, the, through Facebook. But we come together today uh, on this last Sunday of Advent, remembering how God came into the world through a virgin named Mary. We don't meet many Marys in Scripture until we get to the New Testament. And then they're all over the place. There's like two or three, maybe four Marys in the New Testament. This particular one is the one that's engaged to Joseph. And Luke tells us more about her than any of the other gospel writers. The other ones mention her at different times. But Luke, kind of, Luke I think, uh, is trying to answer our question, just who is she and where did she come from and who she related to. And, you know, it used to be in one community I was at up in southwest Virginia, the first question that came out of anybody's mouth when they meet you was, Who's your daddy? <laughs> well, we might say, who's your mama? <laughs> when we meet Jesus, we want nobody's mama. We want nobody's daddy. We want to know those things because those are the people that influence us the most. 
in our growing up days, if we get to have those people in our lives, they're the ones who invest the most in us and who mean a great deal to us. And I'd love to have been with Luke when he was researching who Jesus' mother was. I wonder how many people he had to ask before he found stories of Mary. You know, before the Protestant Reformation, Mary had a very important role within Christendom, uh, one that uh, she had been elevated to this place called the, the Mother of God, the one who bore Jesus into the world. Because people were maybe spending too much time thinking about Mary and not enough time thinking about Jesus, the Protestant reformers said, well, let's just quit talking about Mary. Just throw all that out the, the window. And so for about 500 years now in the Protestant circles, we haven't talked much about Mary except at Christmas there would be no story of Christmas without the story of Mary. For Mary fulfilled the role of the prophets who said, A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And when Luke begins unraveling this story in the first chapter, of his gospel, uh, it's a story that's both fascinating and informative, and it's a very interesting story. An angel comes to Mary at a particular time in the sixth month, not just any angel. Mary didn't get her own angel. She didn't get an angel that no one else has seen. In fact, if you go back in the Old Testament, the angel Gabriel appeared to the prophet Daniel. And so when Gabriel appears in Luke's gospel, it's a reprise of a role he's already been a part of in the Old Testament. And he was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. Now you have to understand when Luke is talking about places and events, it's for a particular purpose. He doesn't just come up with a place. He's giving a real place. I've been to Nazareth. I know Nazareth actually exists. But do you know where Nazareth is at? It's in the middle of the back country of Judea. It's in Galilee. Galilee is where the country people live. Galilee's where the folks live that the, the elites didn't really think were much. You know, they call country like that today in our culture, they call it uh, flyover country. Because it's seen as insignificant to the people who think they're significant. <laughs> Don't miss this point. God came to Mary, who was a country girl, living in the, a place that was seen as insignificant. Because God doesn't do anything by accident. He does it on purpose. And when God went to a place that the world considered insignificant to a young woman who had no connection to anybody important in her day, God was doing something very significant. God could have chosen to send Jesus to a royal family where he could be the subject of paparazzi photographs and lots of celebration. 
But that's not what happened. He came to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now do you realize that when Luke is telling this, it is it is unusual to give details about women and to even give their names. But Luke made sure that Mary's name was in the text because he's telling the story of a God who thinks very differently than we think. It is not only a geographical place of insignificance, The females weren't held in high esteem in the culture of the ancient world. And Mary gets her whole, a whole verse almost to herself when it says the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one favored one that means the one the lord chose favor is a word that we use when we're describing what god's grace is all about right favor is our understanding that when god gives us his grace he's giving us his unmerited favor we don't deserve it we can't earn it it's God's to give, and he chooses to give it. And so here is a word of grace in the story of Mary, who was the favored one of God. And then he says, the Lord is with you. Is it any accident that in the liturgy of the ancient church, they began saying, the Lord be with you? And then everyone would say, and also with you? Because that is the good news of the gospel, that God came to be with us. That's Emmanuel, again, that we've talked about through these Advent weeks. It says she was much perplexed by his words. She was scratching her head. She was trying to think, what in the world is going on? Who is this person? Why are they saying these things? And what sort of greeting might this be? And the angel said to her what angels say to everybody who has an encounter with an angel. Words that we need to hear this year. Words that we may have needed to hear at other times in your life. Words that basically say, fear not. Fear not. Do you know how many times the scripture says, fear not? Wonder why it says that. Could it be because every time we turn around, we get to this place where we're overcome with fear about this or that or the other thing in our lives? And God comes just galloping into our lives saying, fear not. Gabriel says, do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. You know what Jesus means? If you, if you go up the family tree of languages from the Greek that would have been what the New Testament was written in, to Aramaic that Jesus actually spoke, to Hebrew that the Old Testament was written in. The word Jesus is related to the word Yeshua, which is transliterated for us in the Old Testament in the prophet Joshua. I have a nephew named Joshua. Every once in a while, I like to call him Yeshua just to see if he's paying attention. Do you know what Yeshua means or Joshua and Jesus? The word means Savior. When Joshua appears on the scene, his name is Savior. 
So when the angel says you're going to name your son Savior, Mary's still scratching her head. What in the world does he mean by this? So he goes on to describe what he means. He says he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The angel Gabriel has just described Israel's hope for one that they call the Messiah, the one that would be the anointed one to come and to reestablish the throne of David and of whose kingdom there will be no end. What does that say about who Jesus is? He came into this world to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to reign forever and ever so Mary asked the question, how can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. In other words, a miracle is going to take place. When we think about Christmas, we don't always think about miracles. You know, babies, babies happen, don't they? They just show up. Sometimes you can try hard to have babies and not do any good. Tammy and I have been down that path. And then there's those people that just seem to have, have them without any trouble at all, you know? You know, old fertile myrtle. <laughs> I don't know if that's who Mary was, but uh, she certainly was in a position to be blessed by a miracle of God by having this child. And do you remember in the book of Genesis, there was a woman at the very beginning of the story of the creation of the world. God looked upon Adam and he said, it's not good for the man to be alone, so I will make for him a helpmate. Do you remember that story? Do you remember how we tell about how it was Eve who kind of drug Adam down? Amen. Come on, men, help me. And um, but do you realize, oh, Adam just sit there and didn't say a mumbling word, did he? He just he he let Eve do all the talking, and he did not he did not assert his spiritual leadership in the home i will just tell you i don't think he had read a bit of bible that day and i don't think he'd been praying too hard he just took remember what he said about it he said the lord came to him and said why would you do this thing and he said well the woman thou gavest me she gave me to eat and I ate. That's called blame shifting. Twice. The woman thou gavest me, blaming God for putting him in a position where he could fail, and then blaming her for giving him the forbidden fruit. Do you remember what God said to Adam when he cursed him and told him to get out of the garden? He said, On, you know, he said that you will work for what you get from here on by the sweat of your brow. And he said, a woman will be saved through childbirth. You remember that? Did you just see what I said here? It says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born 
will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. Mary is fulfilling what it said in the book of Genesis, and she is saving the entire human race by simply showing up and being faithful. She didn't ask God for this opportunity. She didn't seek this opportunity. She was chosen by God to do this. And she's still scratching her head because she can't understand it. So the angel says, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. Now there's a piece of news that I think Mary's jaw probably just dropped to the floor. She didn't know anything about Elizabeth, about to have a baby. Old Elizabeth? Old Elizabeth is going to have a baby? What are you talking about? You know, that's why they do a census at the nursing home, just in case God's still at it. <laughs> verse 37 is a verse that I think you could underline. You might want to put this in on a T-shirt and wear it because it's a statement of faith that we learn as we get older and as we see what God does in our lives and the lives of people around us, it says this, for nothing will be impossible with God. Say nothing, nothing. will be impossible, be impossible. With, God. with God. And Mary said, as her response to what the angel just told her. We don't know if she did this immediately or if there was a long pause, but she said these words. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now, when you study angelic visitations throughout Scripture, you always have that moment when the angel or whoever's talking has to, has to say, fear not. And then there's a moment that they give the message. And then sometimes there's a moment where there's a time of bargaining back and forth. You remember when the Lord came to Moses? You know Moses, he's kind of like in the top ten of prophets of the Old Testament. Good old Moses, when the Lord came to Moses, and he didn't send an angel to Moses, he came himself. Talked to Moses from the burning bush, you remember that? And get your shoes off, Moses. The ground you're standing on is holy. He said, Moses, you're going to go down to Pharaoh, you're going to tell him to let my people go. What did Moses do? Did he say, let it be with me according to your word? No, he didn't. He said, can't you send somebody else? I can't even speak. I stutter when I get in front of people. Mary didn't do that. Mary responded with a faith that was unusual for people of the Bible. Because <laughs> you know, all these people that we look up to in the Old Testament, they're not all that faithful. <laughs> That's why there's a New Testament. Because <laughs> the Old Testament just didn't work out. And Mary says, let it be with me according to your word. Mary is placing herself in a position of saying yes to God, accepting what God has already decided to do. 
you know, we're in the same position with our lives. God wants to do great things in our lives. But he's got to get that yes out of us. Now, sometimes we go a lifetime saying, well, maybe. A good maybe ain't near as good as a good yes. God got a yes out of Mary. It says the angel then departed from her. And then Mary went on a trip. She went on a trip. <laughs> she heard the angel talk about her cousin Elizabeth. So she, she left Galilee and she went all the way down past Jerusalem to a little town below Jerusalem where Elizabeth and Zechariah were living. And she met Elizabeth at the door of their home. She greeted her. It says the child leaped in Elizabeth's womb. John the Baptist knew that he was in the presence of God, even in the womb. Friends, did you hear that? There, even in the womb, a child is alive. So Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, recognizes what's going on. And she exclaimed, it says, with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Elizabeth just filled with the Holy Spirit blesses Mary for understanding her role and for being willing to be the Lord's channel of blessing this world. And then Mary turns around and sings the first Christmas song ever in the history of the world. We call it the Magnificat. It says, my, Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, Abraham and to his descendants forever. That's the first Christmas song. Even before the angel showed up, I'm talking about the company of angels. They're going to show up in the next chapter. But Mary was blessed by God. And her faithfulness turned her blessing into one that we all share. Because through her, Jesus came into the world to save our souls. Christmas is a lot of things. It's a feeling. It's a beautiful season of light and peace and hope. Even people who aren't Christian look for Christmas as a time that's better than other times of the year because people seem to have a better spirit about them at Christmas unless you go to Walmart during Black Friday. 
But Christmas is more than just a time of giving and receiving of gifts. We give and receive gifts because there is one who has given us the greatest gift. And the joy that he gives us enables us to give joy to others through the giving of gifts. That's why we do that. But we could have Christmas without gifts. We could have Christmas without cards, without lights, without candles, without trees, without poinsettias. Because the key of Christmas is a baby named Jesus, whose very name indicates that he came to be the Savior of the world. So throughout this week, as we head towards Christmas Day, I hope you'll take some time to set aside some time to just thank God for what he's blessed you with in the coming of Jesus. Will you bow your head? God, we thank you for the blessing of Mary. We thank you that through the one that she bore, we have all received your grace. May we trust in him with all our hearts and be saved from our sins and acknowledge him as King of kings and Lord of lords whose kingdom lasts forever. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is coming to the world to be our Savior that we may have life and have it more abundantly.
go forth from this place blessed by the baby Mary brought into the world. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen.